Hello everyone. Welcome to part two of the seven tests of determining if God is really speaking to you. Remember last week we covered that it will line up with God's word. So it has to line up with God's character as revealed in his word. You can review that on our YouTube channel and we put it out last week on a Tuesday. So look for that. And then also, godly counsel. You need to seek godly counsel to see, you know, hey, you need people around you to let you know that have a walk with God. They have a prayer life. They're in the Word of God on a daily basis, and their character reflects it. And you know they're godly people, and you need to become a wise counsel someday yourself as well for others, to lead others. So you need to have a lifestyle of prayer in the, in the word. But godly counsel helps confirm, you know, what God is saying in your life. People will tell you that actually really do care about you, uh, not just telling you what you need to hear. So let's continue on with having peace. Point number three of seven tests about hearing God's voice, point number three is you'll have peace about doing it. You need to have peace. You need to have peace in your soul. You need to have peace in your spirit about doing what you feel like God's word is. And I want to share with you, I always share with you a question. One question to ask yourself, even if it's tough, is my spirit telling me that it is the right thing to do. I have peace about it. It's the right thing to do. I want to share with you out of Isaiah 26.3. Uh, and it, it says out of the Amplified Version of the Bible, You will keep in perfect and constant peace the one whose mind is steadfast, that is committed and focused on you, in both inclination and and character, inclination and character, because it continues on and says, he trusts and takes refuge in you with hope and confident expectation. I want to share with you a couple notes that I came across. In the Hebrew, this peace, this inclination that we're talking about, the Hebrew word for inclination it became a technical term in the Jewish tradition, and the rabbis frequently had referred uh, to both things, an evil inclination and also a good inclination. And an evil inclination is, is a part of the sin nature, but they also recognize that a good inclination, which the righteous choose to follow, and urge people to make their good inclination king over evil. That's very interesting, isn't it? The people took that perspective about wisdom, about having peace, about doing what God has called you to do. Now, it doesn't mean what God has called you to do is not difficult. And I want to share with you, and you can, you can read Acts 16, but just verse 22 through 24, Paul and Silas are in prison. In prison. Wow, God led, me, led them into prison. Well, they ended up in prison as a result of doing what God called them to do, but it was a difficult situation. The crowd had joined in verse 22 and attacked them, and the chief magistrate tore their robes off them and ordered that Paul and Silas be beaten with rods. And Paul had rec uh, recorded in Scripture that, you know, quite a few times he was beaten with rods. But after striking them many times with rods, they threw them into prison, commanding the jailer to guard them securely. The jailer to guard them securely. Having received such a strict command, he threw them into the inner prison and fastened their feet in stocks and an agonizing position. So this jailer took things even further to an extreme an extreme of discomfort. But you know, here's what the outcome was. If you read Acts 16, is the jailer receives Christ. His family actually receives Christ. However, 
even if you're confident, you know it's going to be difficult. You're confident that God has spoken to you. You need to wait until peace fills your soul, until peace fills your soul to do what he's instructed you to do. What this will do is it will ensure God's timing in your life. Don't proceed without peace. Don't proceed without peace. Even Paul said the Spirit restrained us from going to Macedonia at one point, but later on he would go there um, in God's timing. So that's about having peace doing that. You might do a word search on peace in Scripture and see what comes up. Point number four, not only will you have peace about doing it, but it also calls you to service. It calls you to service. That's point number four. So the question would be to ask yourself, is this leading me to self-serving? Or is it going to cause me to be self-promoting? Or does it cause call me to serve others? Is it calling me to be self-serving, self-promoting, or is it calling me into service? Is it calling me into service? A counterfeit leading C will lead you into self-promotion. It will lead you into self-serving. We can sense, however, that the Holy Spirit's leading us. When the Holy Spirit leads us, it will cause us to, to humble ourselves and serve somebody. Or... It might be that you give something away. You know, I had an experience in my life. I lived in an apartment in Inglewood at one point on Bannock Street. And uh, I didn't have much at the time. I went through a change, uh, you know, in my life. And, um, you know, but however, I came from church, looked through my rear view mirror. It opened up like a panoramic view of a picture. It wasn't like looking through a rear view mirror. All of a sudden it became like a huge picture of something behind me. And I seen a man at a dumpster and I also seen a storm coming behind him. And I heard God prompt me and say, what do you want to do? What are you going to do about this? In other words. So I said, I know what I'll do. I'll get him a coat. So I went upstairs to get him a coat and as I went into my closet, I was going to get the coat that I wanted to give away. And God asked me, what about that one? It was one I really liked. And so what I did is I grabbed that one and I said, I'll give him that one. And I went downstairs and I felt peace about it. And I gave him the coat. And as I went back and the man looked at me and smiled, I turned around and in an instant, when I turned back around, he was gone. You know, Scripture tells us sometimes we're entertaining angels unaware. So, is it causing us, is the Holy Spirit, we know it's the Holy Spirit when he's calling us to humble ourselves, serve somebody, or maybe give something away. In Acts 20, verse 22 through 23, And now, compelled by the Spirit and obligated by my convictions, Paul says, I'm going to Jerusalem, not knowing what is going to happen to me there. Not knowing. Except that the Holy Spirit solemnly and empathetically affirms to me that city after city imprisonment and suffering await me. Paul was destined to serve the people in Jerusalem. He was bringing an offering, actually, from the Christian church in Corinth to Jerusalem. He didn't know what was going to happen to him. He kind of knew because he, he received the promptings from God, but he had peace about it. Many times, family, God's leadings will lead you to choose between being comfortable and building a godly character through trust and faith in him. Let me say that again. Many times God's leadings will require you to choose 
between being comfortable and building a godly character through trust and faith in him. Why don't we pray today about what we talked about? Let's pray together. Father, we just want to have peace about what you called us to do. We want to be called to service in the way that you've called us to serve. God, Lord, just reveal to us our motives and help us to know our timing, the peace that transcends all understanding, guarding our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Lord, we thank you for that, and we praise you for what you're doing in our lives as we listen to your voice and understand it better. God bless you. Thank you for joining today. We love you. Hope to see you soon.